Do you have a 3.5 liter Ford engine with a misfire under the intake plenum? Nuts and bolts with Tone here guys and today I have a 2016 Ford Explorer with a 3.5 liter engine and we have a PO303, we have a misfire on cylinder three. Now I have confirmed that this misfire is caused by a bad ignition coil and I did this with current ramping with a scope. So we know 100% that this is going to be the fix. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to pull that plenum off, replace that coil, and in the end, I'm gonna show you a little clip of what it looks like when you have good ignition coils. I may even throw in a little screen to show you what the bad one looked like to start with. Before we get started, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell to get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Let's jump right in. First things first, we got to get the intake air tube off. That's just two, uh, two worm drive clamps at, at each end. And we have the PCV hose here. You have this white clip here, and you have to push it one direction, and it releases it. And now we can take the air box out. Next up, we got to get some of these electrical connectors disconnected and the brake booster hose disconnected from the intake plenum. Tuck that over there by the master cylinder, disconnect the purge valve and also the throttle body and the purge valve has a green clip on there and you have to squeeze the two tabs together and then push it through. The wiring harness will slip away between the throttle body and the plenum. Next up, we got this air connection at the back. And I use some pliers to move the clamp. Now we got to break it free, slip it off, and there we go. Then we have an electrical connector over here on the corner. And get that off. Next up is the intake plenum bolts. We're going to have bolts around the perimeter. There's one bolt right in the center right there. We got to undo those. That bolt will actually come out, but the rest of them are captured into the intake plenum. Now there's this wiring connection here, like a little Christmas tree. That's keeping me from getting to this last bolt. So I'm going to pop that out of the intake plenum. So that way I can get to the bolt and we can get this plenum. We can start to get it off. So there we go. Got the clip out and we can finish taking the bolts out. We're going to run around the plenum and get all these disconnected. Now these aren't super tight. They shouldn't be super tight. And I think this is the last one. And we're gonna see if the plenum comes off. Oh, nope, nope, still connected. Oh, there's a bracket. Oh my gosh. All right, so this bracket is behind the throttle body on the intake and it connects to the side of the cylinder head. And I got a mirror, I'm looking all around because this just does not seem normal. The, it's not on the right way. And so therefore I was having a little trouble locating this and I finally found it. And it's gonna take me a while because somebody put the bracket on backwards. So they put it on behind the intake plenum and the bolt comes from the back through the bracket into the intake plenum. It's supposed to go through the front and into the intake plenum. So it was quite a journey to get that one out, let me tell you. Next up, we just gotta wiggle this out and make sure that the wiring harness is not stuck between the throttle body and the plenum. And cut myself pretty bad, scraping my hand, getting that bolt out. And the intake plenum is off. These intake plenums are pretty simple. Definitely not very hard to get off. Sometimes the bracket is the hardest part of the intake plenum. Next up, we got to get the coil out. And working on getting the coil out here. And then we're going to pull out the plug because we're doing a spark plug and a coil. And they only want to do one spark plug. It's a fleet company. This thing's been sitting for six months. So all the coils are Motocraft coils, except for this one here, which is our misfiring cylinder. And what do you know? It is a Duralast coil. Surprise, surprise. And pulling out this aftermarket coil, now it created doubt. Did somebody replace this? Now, this Explorer has been sitting for six months. So now I'm questioning. This is my first time current ramping anything. And I'm, I'm concerned now. Did they put this Duralast coil in there to fix a misfire and then park it for six months because it didn't fix it? Or is this Duralast coil 
the problem. So now I'm going to do a little more testing just to be sure. Here I'm putting in the spark plug. We're going to go ahead and get that in because I'm replacing the spark plug either way. And then we're going to do a little bit of testing just to make sure that I don't have to pull this thing back apart, that I didn't make a mistake. So one thing that it could be is it could be a bad fuel injector. And generally what I've found on these, when you have a bad fuel injector that's causing a dead miss like that, it is usually something that you can test for by resistance testing. So I'm going to get out my Devo forward probes and we're going to go on to this, these injectors and we're going to check a couple of injectors just to confirm that the injector is not the problem. So with the Devo pin, uh, connections, it goes right on the pins in the, on the, in the injector. And if we wanted to go the other way and connect to the injector connector, we could forward probe them and go right in and not cause any issues. So here I am doing a resistance test on this injector and we're going to see what the reading is. It was kind of hard because I don't think I had the right leads to start with. So I don't think it was making a great connection on the fuel injector. And it's kind of hard trying to fish the, the, the wire down there while my arm is laying on it. So you can see right there, we don't have a huge amount of resistance. I ended up with 13.7 ohms of resistance. Now, sometimes with fuel injectors, you can find specs and things like that, but when they're old, sometimes, and the one in the front here is 12.7. So sometimes the best way to check if your injectors are, are good, I mean, so to speak, is by ohm testing other injectors. Now, the one in the front was 12.7, and I thought that I didn't have the right leads when I tested the ones in the back. Now, if you don't have a proper connection, then your results are can be inaccurate because you gotta have a solid connection. So here I'm retesting and now I have 12.7. So with the proper leads, I had the same resistance on the back as I had on the front. So I know that that injector isn't electrically failed. So now we're going to put the, the plug in. Earlier, I said I was putting the plug in. I was pulling the plug out so I could take a peek down the cylinder. And, and while I was doing that, I was contemplating about the injector, and that's when I decided to ohm test it. So, And, of course, we used Motocraft parts on this, so that way there's no guessing when we're done. One of the worst things that you can do is have a problem with the vehicle, and you make a repair. And then you get done and you have an issue. Sometimes it's the same issue. Sometimes it's a different issue. And then you contemplate, was it the part that I put in causing this issue? So now we got the plenum flipped upside down and we're going to get this cleaned up. Oh, I already cleaned it up. And we're going to go ahead and put the gasket in and get ready to put this in. We're going to do a little cleanup. We're just going to wipe it. I sprayed a little brake clean on a rag and we're going to wipe it because it is a plastic intake. So we are going plastic to plastic. So you don't have to do anything super crazy cleaning it. So now we're going to finagle the intake in. And now when you put intakes in, plenums, things like that, you want to go ahead and wiggle it around. You want to get all your bolts lined up, all your bolts started. So generally what I do is I get everything laid in place, start a couple bolts, get the bracket bolts in, and before I tighten anything down. Now in this case, Took it out because I didn't really like the way the bracket was sitting. So I had to move it to kind of get it in the right spot because I didn't want to have to fight it like I did in the beginning. Now, what I discovered is that the bracket just is not sitting right. And I should have just pulled this throttle body off to start with. I have the gasket already. So it's not like I don't have a gasket. I just didn't pull it off, and I fought with that bracket for a long time. Uh, whereas if I had just pulled the throttle body, it would have been a piece of cake. And so now I'm able to see the bracket from the front. Now we got the bracket in the right spot, and I can see it. So now it's time to get the bolt started. So I'm going to use a Koken Universal Nut Grip Socket. Now, these 
are they have a ball detent on each side and there's a ring that squeezes the balls tight so you put your bolt on there and it hangs on to it doesn't fall off and when you're done and you pull it back your socket does not come off your extension and these extensions have crazy neural you can also get 10 percent off at cooking usa by using code nuts and bolts with tone at checkout now you can see how i do it i get the bracket bolt in and i run it in the, most of the way now that the bracket is lined up and some engines have two brackets on the back of the plenum this one has one there and i can't remember if there's another one there's only one on it right now so here we're going to go ahead and run the bolts in now these bolts aren't super tight so you want to be very careful because you can strip out the lower intake and then you'll have to replace that because you'll have a vacuum leak. So we're going to just run through, get them all snug, and then we'll get everything torqued. So now it's time to get the torque wrench. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I almost forgot one more bolt, the top bolt there. And we got to run the bracket in. So let's go ahead and get that bracket snug, and then it will be time to grab the torque wrench. Don't forget to tighten this bracket. Next up, we're going to get torque wrench. This is the Capri Tools quarter drive mini torque wrench, and the bolts are 89 inch pounds. I think the upper bolt is like 89 inch pounds plus a tiny bit, but I, I, I don't really do that. Just 89 inch pounds across the board and you'll be good to go. Uh, I also do a weird thing when I torque intakes and oil pans and things like that is I go through, I torque everything. And then I go back and I double check it because sometimes when you're torquing something, uh, not a lot of times on a plenum, but on, on oil pans and tranny pans, things like that, when you tighten down the middle and then you tighten down the outside, the middle isn't as tight as it should be. So I find that when I come back to the middle, it, it still has to be tightened before it forks again. So I always kind of go back over it like a second time just to be safe. Next step is to reconnect everything. Now I kind of have a rule of thumb that I go by and whenever I don't follow this, I forget something. And my rule of thumb is this, if I touch it, I connect it. I generally don't touch something and then walk away from it and to go back to it because chances are you're gonna forget it, especially electrical connectors and things like that. This kind of job, not so much because it's such a small job and there's not that many connectors. However, it still happens. Next step, put the air intake tube back on and... All right, this is the one with the defective coil. We just pulled the coil out. It was a Duralast coil. So we put a Motocraft one in. We're setting it up. I have not started it yet. Now it's time to get ready to current ramp this. Now, generally, I wouldn't normally do this. I would just start it up and look for misfires, especially when I had a dead miss. However, as I'm going down this road of current ramping uh, and learning to use a scope more, you have to see what good stuff looks like before you can, well, so you can condemn the bad stuff. And I condemned the bad stuff based on what I thought it should look like, and now I wanna see what it actually is supposed to look like. So we can go ahead and we can take this ignition coil and we can move it up like that. What we know is that this coil, when it fires, the one that comes down, that's the one that is showing our cylinder four. So let's go ahead and give it a stop right there. Now, we know the firing order is, we're gonna go backwards, it starts at one, but we're starting at number four right there. So we know that this is four, this is two, this is five, and this is three, and that's six. And then this is one. Now, if this was on the edge of the screen, then one would be over here. So we have one, four, five, two, three, six. Now you can see that that one is the same. That one, that one, that one. Those are all exactly the same. This one is not. Four. Number five, number two, number five, 
And number three. Now, now what we're going to do is we're going to slow down the time. No. Okay, so Ryan Mullen told me this trick right here. So we're gonna do is now. Now watch this. All right. So I learned this trick from a buddy. So it's gonna take a second. Oh my hand clamp turned off. So. What you do is you let it, you go into 500 millivolt per division, okay? Now this, this right here, we can record what's on the screen and we can zoom on the screen. So I'm gonna let this cycle all the way through, we're gonna stop it. Now we can zoom to everything that's on this screen all the way across. So, whereas before, I was trying to record it with six cylinders on the screen, it was really hard. So now, now we can zoom this. And I mean, look at this. I mean, we can, we can go far. So, we can see right here that we obviously do not have a misfire anymore because even just looking from here, it was visible that we had a misfire, that that, that cylinder had a problem. So now we can come across here. So now we can come across here and we can look at the firing order. And the firing order is, this is the number four coil. So four, two, five, three. So we know right here that before this cylinder was going straight up and then having a little ramp at the top, that was it. So now we know that that cylinder looks exactly like that cylinder. And final confirmation, just got done test driving. No codes, let's go, we'll read the codes one more time and we'll see that we have no codes. And this one is good. After watching this video, I hope you are as excited as I am because this is the first time that I've ever current ramped ignition coils and found a bad coil before replacing it. In these cases where the coils are underneath the plenum, it's always a gamble. When you're not, when you don't know how to do this, you don't have the tooling, the experience, pretty much you are just removing the plenum, checking the plug, replacing the plug, replacing the coil, and hoping and praying that that fixes it. Maybe you compression test that cylinder. However, that is the only thing that you can do unless you scoped it, you saw you had a bad coil, you knew for sure. And this case was the first time I've ever turned in, in 20 years, I've ever went to the service advisor and said, 100% guaranteed, it's the ignition coil and here's why. And I showed him the little video. So there was no questions asked. So drop a comment down below and let me know if you current ramp coils and if you're able to come to a 100% a guarantee that this is the problem based on a misfire or if you do the hope and pray method. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.